The weapon of choice for both the Sith and the Jedi, the lightsaber held great significance to its user, it being connected to them through the Force itself. The colour of the lightsaber signified the wielder's personality, affiliation and even their specific discipline within the Jedi Order. In Legends, a lightsaber would be coloured based upon the colour of the chosen lightsaber crystal. However, in canon, the coloration is determined based upon the user's force abilities and skills rather than colour preference. Today we will be exploring the meanings of the different lightsaber colours in depth using both canon and Legends material. First of all, we have my personal favourite lightsaber colour, red. Red lightsabers in both canon and legends were made in slightly different ways to other lightsabers. In legends, red lightsabers utilised synthetic lightsaber crystals, which were made using the dark side of the force. However, in canon, red blades were produced through the bleeding of a kyber crystal. This process involved the Sith pouring all of their hatred and anger into the crystal, turning it a crimson red. In both canon and legends, red lightsabers represented the dark emotions of anger, hatred and greed, typically used by the Sith. However, in Legends, there were some exceptions to this. Adi Gallia found an exceptionally rare light red kyber crystal and installed it into her lightsaber, but was forced to abandon it after the revelation of the Sith. Although there is little information on naturally occurring red kyber crystals, they were attuned to the light side of the Force. Similar to the naturally occurring red lightsaber crystal was the pink lightsaber crystal seen in Legends. These were just as rare as red kyber crystals, but were even harder to acquire. As far as we know, these could only be found within the eggs of the Kinrath, a species native to Dantooine. Just like in canon, these kyber crystals could change colour depending upon the alignment of the Force user. While the Kinrath eggs usually produced a blue or green crystal, on rare occasions they would produce a yellow or pink saber crystal. While it's not known exactly what the meaning of this colour is, I thought it was worth a mention regardless. While working under the Emperor, Mera Jade utilised a pink lightsaber crystal, leading me to believe that it has dark side connotations, albeit less so than the traditional red Sith blade. As we all know, the real reason purple was created was so that Samuel L. Jackson could stand out during the Battle of Geonosis. However, in universe, purple signified a closer alignment to the dark side than most Jedi. Mace Windu was of course the most famous wielder of the purple lightsaber, signifying his more aggressive fighting style. Windu used a variation of Form 7 known as Vapad. Form 7 was traditionally used by the Sith and was heavily frowned upon by the Jedi Order. However, Windu was able to channel some of his and his opponent's dark side energy into his fighting style, creating a variation of Form 7 that was not forbidden by the Jedi. Despite Windu's dogmatic views concerning the Jedi and Anakin Skywalker, he was in a way the most balanced Jedi in the Order, utilising both the dark and the light, thus making his lightsaber purple. In Legends, purple sabers were slightly different. Instead of symbolising the balance between light and dark, purple sabers were more similar to the pink and naturally occurring red crystals discussed earlier and were made by acquiring incredibly rare amethyst crystals. Windu first acquired his saber through the use of the Force Shatterpoints ability, which allowed him to see glimpses of the future. He foresaw that he would create one of the most elegant sabers in the galaxy, and the Force compelled him to travel to the world of Horokan. After a short battle with rock monsters, Windu killed one of them. Distraught, he then used the Force to bring them back to life. It was in this moment that Windu realised that he could use his anger to cause great destruction or to defeat evil. After this profound realisation, the rock monsters gifted Windu with the amethyst crystal which he used for the remainder of his life. Next up, we have blue, the most common lightsaber colour. Within canon, the specific meaning and differences between green and blue is yet to be fully explored, although both were of course affiliated with the light side of the Force. However, in Legends, blue lightsabers were used by the Jedi Guardians, one of the three schools of thought within the Jedi Order. Users of blue lightsabers would focus upon the more physical aspects of the Force, they would mainly use their Force abilities to combat threats within the galaxy, usually through violence. By the time of the Clone Wars, blue lightsabers were the most common lightsaber colour within the Jedi Order, in large part due to their abundance upon the planet Ilum. Green lightsabers were reserved for those who were very powerful in the Force. In Legends, they were known as the Consulars, and unlike the Jedi Guardians, they spent most of their time contemplating on the Force, seeking to vanquish the dark side through exploring the Force rather than through physical confrontation. Diplomacy and planning were the primary weapon of the Jedi Consulars, although they were still trained with the lightsaber up to and even beyond the level of the Jedi Guardians, in case they ever needed it. Their strong connection to the Force often meant they were even more skilled with a blade than a Jedi Guardian, as they were able to use the Force to quicken their movements and strengthen their blows. Next up, we have turquoise lightsabers, perhaps the rarest of all the saber colours. 
While their exact meaning is not known, it can be assumed that the colour represented a force alignment somewhere between a Jedi Guardian and a Consular. Their rarity can largely be attributed to the extreme expense and scarcity of turquoise lightsaber crystals. The first known way of acquiring a turquoise or teal blade was by using the Sunrider's Destiny lightsaber crystal. This crystal was one of a kind, and once properly tuned, this lightsaber could only be used by its rightful owner. The second way of obtaining a turquoise blade was by utilising a rainbow gem as the lightsaber crystal. Rainbow gems were found only on the planet of Galanor, and were in fact a form of silicon-based life. Jedi Tenel Kar utilised several of these gems in her Rancor Tooth lightsaber hilt, producing a turquoise blade. It is said that each of these gems cost the same as a Mon Calamari Star Cruiser, perhaps making this lightsaber one of the most valuable items in the galaxy. The Jedi Guardians and Consulars were of course the main schools of thought within the Jedi Order, but there was a third, lesser known school called the Jedi Sentinels. In Legends, Sentinels often used a yellow lightsaber and were typically regarded as somewhere between a Jedi Guardian and a Consular. Sentinels focused on perfecting skills and were not usually associated with the Jedi Order taking on practical aspects of the Jedi Guardians, but also the contemplative nature of the Consulars. They usually stayed away from the Jedi Temple, preferring to conduct their Jedi affairs within communities throughout the galaxy. Many Sentinels were technology and medical experts, professions that other Jedi thought were below them. The Sentinels were particularly feared by Palpatine, due to the fact that they did not overly rely on the Force and could easily hide. However, in both canon and legends, yellow lightsabers were also used by the Jedi Temple Guards, some of the most devoted Jedi in the Order. They were so devoted, in fact, that the position required them to have absolutely no emotional attachments or identity. However, Jedi Temple Guards did not go out and find Kyber crystals like other Jedi. Instead, their lightsabers would be passed down to them from previous Temple Guards, to prevent them from having attachments even to their own lightsaber. However, Jedi Sentinels and Temple Guards were not the only ones to use yellow lightsabers. The early Jedi often used yellow or orange-bladed protosabers, although this may have been because lightsaber technology had not been refined at this point. The Eternal Empire were also seen using yellow lightsabers, although they were secretly led by Sith Emperor Vitiate under the disguise of Valkorion. The Knights of Zakul, as their Force users were known, explored all aspects of the Force. Although they studied and used the dark side, members were encouraged to share their findings with the rest of the Order, something that almost never happened within the Sith Empire. Similar to the Jedi Sentinels, they also placed a great deal of emphasis on technological progress as well as the Force. The meaning of the yellow lightsaber is the most confusing, it being used by some of the most devoted and rebellious adherents of the Jedi Order, as well as the Eternal Empire. If I were to make a guess, I'd say that yellow represents those who explore many aspects of the Force, but also have a broad understanding of other skills such as technology. Most commonly, yellow is associated with a wielder's dedication and persistence in undergoing learning, for the betterment of oneself and community, be that about the Force or otherwise. Next up, we have white. White sabers are unlike many of the other colours seen in canon, as it was not chosen by the Kyber crystal, but rather through the healing of the Kyber. This lightsaber colour was achieved by reversing the process of bleeding, discussed earlier in the video. In this way, they would free the crystal of the dark side, changing the colour to pure white. A Force user may choose to do this to signify their lack of affiliation with either the Jedi or the Sith, much like Ahsoka Tano. Some claim this is the lightsaber colour of the Grey Jedi. However, as Ahsoka doesn't use the dark side, I believe the white still signifies the light side, only without the dogmatic teachings of the Jedi. Another lightsaber colour we know very little about is black, seen only in the darksaber. We know that the original owner of the darksaber, Tor Vizsla, was of course a Mandalorian, and much more warlike than his Jedi brethren. Many speculate it was constructed using the dark side, or maybe even a combination of both the dark and the light, but thus far, we have not received a full explanation of its meaning. Last of all, we have the orange lightsaber, the newest colour in Star Wars canon thanks to Jedi Fallen Order. This lightsaber colour was exceedingly rare in both the Legends and canon timelines. In Legends, orange lightsabers represented those who sought peaceful resolutions to conflict, much like Jedi with green lightsabers. However, like the yellow lightsaber wielding Jedi Sentinels, they spent much more time on the front lines of a conflict, seeking to bring balance and peace through negotiation and people skills, rather than meditation on the Force. While we don't know what the orange saber's meaning is in canon just yet, some speculate that it may be similar to purple, with purple being a mix between Jedi Guardian and the dark side, 
while Orange is a mix between Jedi Sentinel and the dark side.